Hey up and uh, welcome or welcome back as the case may be and uh, today I'd just like to get something off my chest basically uh, fair warning heads up it's a little bit dark and bear in mind we are coming up to Christmas so uh, if you're uh, easily depressed please feel free to disregard this one but it is my uh, personal reflections upon why retro motorcycles indeed all things retro are as popular as they are at the moment and I'm just going to sort of dig deep into the uh, modern psyche and uh, try and uh, establish some of the reasons these things are as popular as they are so uh, I hope if you do soldier on with this that it's of some interest to you right take a deep breath so then why are some of us dare I say many of us of a certain age so captivated by so-called modern classic or retro motorcycles now to even attempt to answer this question we have to establish a starting point a foundation upon which to build a coherent rationale and the logical starting point is to attempt to arrive at a definition of the term retro and a general consensus around the qualifying properties of any bike to be labelled a modern classic now the Oxford English Dictionary defines the term retro as especially of fashion, music or design characterised by imitation or revival of a style from the relatively recent in brackets, past. Now we do have of course another term which has evolved to become misused in some quarters to describe new things which attempt to mimic old things and that word is vintage. A simple search on eBay or Amazon for vintage motorcycle clothing, vintage motorcycle luggage, vintage motorcycle helmets, vintage this and vintage that will generate endless results display newly manufactured products which often reveal clumsy attempts at capturing the nostalgic in those of us harboring romantic notions of our past and in so doing these at times rather crass endeavors give the lie to any and all notions of authenticity vintage actually means nothing more than age and as such should only be used in conjunction with a date such as 1972 vintage wine a newly manufactured piece of motorcycle clothing advertised as 1960s vintage is nothing more than a lie immediately failing the authenticity test on its own terms and for these reasons we will avoid references to vintage because at least in motorcycle terms a vintage motorcycle is one actually manufactured in the year or decade attributed to it those vincents james's bruffs coventry eagles matchlesses aerials and other marks which can legitimately claim to be vintage So I'll stick with retro as a sort of generic adjective and we'll define modern classic as that category or classification which captures any modern motorcycle intended in some way to remind us of machines made many years earlier. So whether a young hipster seeing the modern classic motorcycle as a hip and trend setting asset to be proudly exhibited on the coffee shop circuit or indeed a mature time served rider for whom British made motorcycles of bygone ages are within living memory there can be no doubt that these machines strike a chord which speaks 
to either an expression of identity or a longing for something which speaks to shared memories of happier, more carefree times. Or perhaps both. Whatever our uh, individual motives are for the ownership of a modern classic motorcycle, we are, in the most general terms, pursuing notions of nostalgia. And let's face it, nostalgia is big business. You only have to look at the number of TV and cinema productions in recent years which are clearly made with the aim of appealing to an audience which is old enough to have personal memories of the era in which these stories are set. In the United Kingdom, TV series such as Life on Mars, Ashes to Ashes, Inspector George Gently, Heartbeat, Call the Midwife, Rock and Chips and many others have enjoyed an almost cult following amongst those most mature viewers. We can also see this trend finding expression in other more material ways. For example, clothing, and of all things, furniture. Witness the likes of the Salvage Hunters TV franchise here in the UK, where either original or renovated tables, chairs, cabinets, lighting, you name it, from the 50s to the 80s, are seen as highly desirable and as attracting a premium price. And of course, incredibly successful productions such as Bangers and Cash, Salvage Hunters Classic Cars and in the States Wayne Carini's Chasing Classic Cars or most of their success to the fact that a large part of the audience are old enough to remember when these old cars and bikes were new cars and bikes. In literature too, there seems to be a retrospective narrative theme to be found in many a successful novel. One of my most favourite reads ever was Stephen King's novel titled 11, 22, 63. It's a story of a man who travels through a portal back in time to the early 1960s with the intention of somehow altering events so as to frustrate Lee Harvey Oswald's preparations for the assassination of JFK on 11. 2263, the 22nd of November 1963. Now the book is in my opinion a masterful work but for me its strength lies less in the captivating plot and more in King's evocative and truly eloquent prose in describing a life lived in 1960s America. To my mind, that book represents King's magnum opus to date, and I never ever tire of drinking from its well. So you see, the past resurrected to the present is big business, and for us, the motorcycling community, no more so than in the business of modern classic motorcycles, and the retro motorcycle clothing and accessories which so often follow in the wake of the purchase of a Triumph, a Royal Enfield, a BSA, a Norton or any other modern day 60s tribute act. These things, put simply, make us feel good. The big question is why? I have a theory here. You see, it seems to me that this phenomenon is not one to be found in any given period in history, at least not on the current scale. Which is to say that the commercialisation of nostalgia is something which has really taken hold since the turn of the millennium. As a young man in the 1980s, I have zero recollection of my elders and betters being in any way nostalgic for the 30s and 40s. Certainly there was no proliferation of consumer products aimed at capturing the collective imaginations of an older population looking back fondly at the years of their youth. Perhaps that had much to do with the war years, but still. No, the nostalgia industry seems very millennial in nature. 
And I do wonder if that's because for all that is genuinely meaningful, good and true in life, our current age, as compared with the 60s and 70s, is in a pretty miserable state. Of course, this is not universally true. There are some for whom life continues to be one of riches, power, status and being forever on an upward trajectory. But for the vast majority of us, our current lot is substantially less than it was, and certainly less than it could and should be. It is reported in mainstream media that the average person in the UK is proportionately around £10,000 a year worse off than was the case before the financial collapses of 2007 stroke 8. We are also several thousand pounds a year worse off than our European equivalents. Why is that? And whereas economics is not necessarily the only measure of quality of life, when positioned alongside the ever increasing conflict and tensions across the globe, it makes for a grim picture. The Western powers, of which we are one, have a history of stirring the pot in other parts of the world, usually with the stated intention of making us more safe, and nearly always resulting in us being made less safe. Where we are today is surely due in no small part to all those years of meddling in affairs we simply do not understand. We have tragically become conditioned to being lied to at every turn by the powers that be, manipulated by an exploitative media and encouraged to hate people we have no reason to hate. It seems to me that in this the season of goodwill to all men, goodwill is in short supply. Now I hate to paint such a dark picture, but the picture is dark certainly darker than it need be. We have become the subject of a great global experiment to see just how much we can be subjugated and drugged into believing that the measure of a good life comes from a set of rules handed to us by our corporate overlords via our puppet governments. Our expectations have been set low and thus we timidly eke out a largely unfulfilled existence. It can and should be better than this. So my intuition is that we, of a certain age, are so fond of all things nostalgic because we can seek refuge in the memories of our own lived history. We surround ourselves, if we can, with material reminders of a time which we know deep down was a better one. Whether the retro movement, if that's what it is, has been engineered as a sort of palliative therapy for us boomers and Gen Xs, or whether it is simply consequential of the massive polarisation of wealth and prosperity in the last couple of decades, is a somewhat irrelevant question, given that the reality remains unchanged. Notwithstanding all of this, we still have, for the time being at least, the opportunity to exercise free will, and take to our bikes and cut through the landscape, the better to forget for a while the harsh realities of the modern world. When we freely ride our modern classic motorcycles, clothed in our retro gear, we are like actors on a time-shifted stage, making the most of the performance before the curtain falls for the last time.